welcome to another arena video. This time I'm going to focus on one of the more commonly asked questions. How do I build a good arena defense? Well, I'm currently sitting at uh, Legend 4, uh, rank 9. Unfortunately, due to family requirements, I can never maintain this rank. It's just impossible for me to play that much, especially during rush hour on Sundays. But I would say I have a pretty good grasp of um, arena defense and how to really maximize wins. This is my current arena defense today. Ran, Rumuru, Balain, and 8pok Ravi. You can see my stats on my website. They're all there. But maybe more importantly, this team nets me really good arena defense. Uh, generally sitting around you know high 20s, low 30s by the end of the week, even when I uh, and Legend with probably 40 to 60 win rate um, Monday to Thursday. So how do I go about doing this? Let's jump into my recommendations. The first thing is maximize your RNG. Generally speaking, people are going to hit your defense with the same teams. So if I see a C. Lilius, Politis, Rem, the Lion Comp, I'm going to use the same four heroes generally every time. So how do you maximize your ability to win? It's really about unpredictability. So when that team faces off against your defense team 10 times, you want to win some of those, right? So there are different aspects of RNG you can include into your team to disrupt their win rate. Counterattacks are probably the most common. Um, you know, you generally see a lot of Rem on defense on counter sets, and obviously with her AOE S2 counter. Uh, there are other ways to add counter as well like Elvis Ritual Sword. The second one I don't see as commonly talked about is speed RNG, right? I myself, I'm a, obviously a big cleaver. I cleave every arena defense. When I see a defense, I think of how to cleave it. And the number one most important part of that is to outspeed your team. While not everyone has amazing 300 speed gear, you may be inching close. So just realize that there is a 5% RNG with every battle. So a 300 speed unit can be 350. So your you know, 290 uh, C Lilius can outspeed a 300 speed Lilius. So having that high speed opener can add a level of speed RNG. Yeah, every time uh, I get outsped by a Payra with you know, two speed imprints, I'm like, that can't be a 320 Payra. It's just speed RNG. So remember that one. Uh, resist debuffs. This is particularly important for a tanky defense. Um, so your opponent may be relying on stuns or defense breaks to uh, clear your team. So any way you can make lightning debuffs harder is going to add a level of RNG, right? Of obviously there's natural 15%, but immunity and extra ER also add to their dice rolls. Debuffs, right? So the opponent is obviously going to throw uh, DPS um, at your team. The more you can disrupt that, like with debuffs, the lower their chances. So this is why Politus on Abyssal Crown is a common defense unit. Dual attacks, right? <laughs> this is maybe more common in RTA, but you know, dang, did he just dual attack again into 
a REM S1, WTF, right? But you can add your own level of dual attack RNG with things like Unity Set, C. Lilius, and other dual attack heroes to mess up their game plan. Lastly is dodging. Um, I see this as less common, but I think there is a specific use for ERBBK. So maybe you've built a natural uh, 200 plus ERBBK, you don't need the whole Bastion. If he's on Shepherd, if I'm gonna try to cleave it with uh, SB Soulburn Ran and I miss, I'm screwed. Your BPK is gonna wipe me. So look for different ways to add RNG to mess up your component. It doesn't always have to be counterattacks, right? Because what can an opponent do? Just throw it over a water, right? So look for other ways to add RNG and try to stack them. Element of surprise. So um, this is probably the most common suggestion when you know, people post on Reddit, how do I build an arena team? But I think it's important to note the different ways you can surprise someone. Uh, this has become an extremely good strategy with the blind changes in arena. So I feel generally there are three ways to surprise. Um, the first one being speed. And generally that's having a really fast opener, whether that's a traditional opener, like, you know, a 320 Pera, that will surprise me, or a lesser seen one, like a 280 speed Landy. You know, maybe uh, I see a Landy FCC defense, I'm like, I'm just gonna cleave that uh, with a pretty cigarette. Turns out the Landy is 280, I'm screwed. But I think it's also important to consider the turn two speed units or counter speed units, I like to call them. Stuff like Dilibet, right? So uh, one of the ways that I cleave is with uh, defense break, uh, with Vildred. And if I'm faced up against a 230, 240 Dilibet, when I hit S3 on my Celilius uh, or Flan, it's gonna cut me, right? It is abnormally fast. So that kind of leads to the second one, which is kind of really closely related, using non-standard builds, right? When you see a run, what do you expect? Sigurd Scythe, no speed on counter. When you see a FCC, right? Expect 30k speed immunity, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So when you're planning out your attack, you're gonna take those standards as uh, defaults, right, into account. So if you can put in something that's non-standard, that may disrupt their game plan. So uh, good examples are, you know, like a super slow Aola. Yeah, I run on into these all the time in, in Guild Wars, right? I bring a hand guy against Aola, but my hand guy's 260. So if that Aola's 220, I'm screwed. You know, maybe there's a fast uh, DPS Rumoru. You're expecting a 200 speed Rumoru on PLE nowadays, but then he comes up and one-shots your crowd. Those are ways to surprise your opponent. And lastly is just extra tanky teams. You know, you see a uh, slow, you know, blind, APOC, Rural. See, I'm just going to straze that or how lover you deal with these ultra tanky teams. But they're all base speed with just ridiculous tank, right? Maybe like a 30k a Ravi. That's just not going to be fun and may cause me to match. I've run into a, a few of those myself. And then, you know, lastly, I do get questions of, hey, hey, can you just give me a team? Like, what team should I put on my arena defense? Just copying a team won't net you to win. It's just a a specific combination of heroes and gear and tuning that's based off of the previous two points that's really going to help but i think there is a general template to follow 
and that predominantly consists of one opener, um, you know, a RAN, a C Lilius, a Para, two DPS, and one utility. And for those of you without you know, good speed gear, you can swap the opener to another utility. Right? DPS is straightforward. This could be a uh, traditional DPS like an, an RB, or it could be a Bruiser. But it has to deal damage. Right? The utility should help you counter some type of strategy against your team. Right? So if you're running a no opener type team, you want some type of anti cleave, right? So Paltis is a great example, right? Especially on Abyssal Crown, disrupt that team. If you kind of look through top 30 defenses, you'll see a very similar uh, pattern, right? If you, I'm on Asia here, Inier's team, you know, opener, see Lilies. 2 DPS, Malina, Rem, and Utility with C Armin, right? She helps to mitigate damage, so it can't be cleaved as easily. Uh, second one, Opener C Lilius, Rem, and Brumru as DPS. Paltus can be as well, and Paltus being additional utility to, to declare cleave. It's a good idea to just kind of scroll through these and Take a look at which ones maybe uh, has heroes you've built already and use that as a starting base and then adjust accordingly. Lastly, there's just a bunch of kind of simple ways to improve that I think are just commonly overlooked. The first one is adjusting your heroes and builds based off of your losses. So if you kind of go back to my defense team, um, previously I was running Ran, Belion, Apoc, and Ameru. Just pop her here. And when I look through all my defense logs, everyone was just throwing in Crow, SSB in particular. I was like, that's just out of blue. And you know, SSB auto is one of those uh, comps you should really be able to deal with with your defense. So I'm like, that's not gonna work. So I changed it to Brimuru. Actually to a Bruiser Brimuru specifically on POV. And while I was still getting a good amount of wins, I noticed that maybe 80% of the people that beat me were using Crow. So I'm like, Crow? Why isn't my Brimuru do anything? Oh yeah, he's on Bruiser. He'll s survive Rimuru's S3 and just horse somebody. So I went ahead and changed my Rimuru to a DPS build, right? 300 crit damage, uh, 3.7k attack, and he does 28k with the attack buff from Ran, uh, Ran Silver Rain, to one-shot basically any crowd and all of a sudden my defense rates shot up again so making those adjustments is really really important the second one is use common teams and heroes to avoid standing out right when I when someone is going to attack they're gonna take a look at the different opponents right and if they attack you and you have some super special unique arena defense team they're gonna remember you even with blind right they can see the heroes and they recognize hey and no one uses spez on defense so every time they see spez they're gonna know it's you so try to use common heroes and templates so you can kind of blend in right even using a the most common team is a great strategy and just modifying it once again based off of those surprise elements we talked about. Last but not least, this is more uh, specific to climbing is, not everyone can build a you know, super specialized arena team with you know ultra fast opener like me and you know, crazy dedicated arena stats. So another strategy is just build an annoying team. When I mean annoying, it's 
team that is hard to kill quickly. So let me give an example here of, of that. So I'll switch this to CR man, and then I'll put Rel here. So this could be a seriously uh, tanky team and may take most people a lot of time to kill um, if they don't have the right hero combinations. So that will naturally help you not get attacked. Actually, from an efficiency standpoint, that may be the best way because <clears throat> the more that you're attacked, the more points that you lose, right? But if you're only attacked very little, and even if you lose 100% of those, maybe that's good enough for you. So definitely keep that in mind as another way. So I'll quickly just scroll through my hero builds here in case um, you guys don't have access to my website. Ran is ultra fast, right? Uh, he meets the RNG element with speed RNG up to basically almost 330 uh, through 35 speed. So even if a, an opponent has one or two speed imprints, I could possibly outspeed him. I have RNG there. I apply debuffs with uh, Belion. She's built non-standard ultra fast on Holy Sack so that she can apply her debuffs. She's not on Albrus injury or counter. So Rowanas don't work. They bring in a Rowana, that's a dead pick. Right. Disruption, adding another level of RNG, right? Then you've got Apoc. She's on a pretty standard build nowadays, but um, obviously mine is uh, very high gear score and does a ridiculous amount of damage for a you know nearly 26k uh, a Rabi. And lastly, you know we we talked about this before, um, the removal on a non-standard pure uh, DPS build. I've been thinking of actually removing Draco Plate and changing to uh, a Spear of Purification just to give him <coughs> that extra uh, CR push. I think the damage is fairly similar, if not um, more of that as well. So I've applied uh, the different rules that I've had to my defense. Hopefully uh, these tips help you. You know, Feel free to jot down in the comments below um, your arena defenses. I can uh, make changes, suggestions on how to improve that. So until next time, cheers.